Well, welcome back to the channel. Today we're coming to you from beautiful but cold and dreary, at least today, Homer, Alaska. And what are we doing the channel today? Well, we're going to be covering the Canon RF 208 lens paired with the Canon R8. A lot of you have been asking about the R6 Mark II and the Canon R8. Pretty much the same camera, just the R8 didn't have IBIS in it. So that's what we're going to cover today. So let's get out and talk about it. So yes, we are back in Homer, Alaska. Why? Because it's just such a great place to be. It's just a great place for wildlife photography to come down, especially in the winter. And I came down here this time with a couple of my friends, Heidi and Cassie, that wanted to come down too, to go just see what we can find and shoot. Because we knew we should have baby otters, we should have rock sandpipers, a lot of things that I showed you last time when you came down here to Homer with photographing. And as usual, Homer never disappoints. Even on the way down, we had a lot of nice stuff coming out from Anchors all the way down in here to Homer. It's about a five hour run to get down here, but just incredible, it's an incredible time. So let's talk a little bit about the Canon R8. So my Canon R8, if you've watched any of my videos, I run it with this Velo battery grip, which makes this camera really feel nice. It, None feels as good as a Canon R3, but it's really close to it. It feels even better to me than a Canon R5 with the battery grip, maybe because it's lighter and this grip is more formed kind of like the R3. It's really, really nice. And what does that give me with that battery grip with the Canon R8? Well, that gives me better battery life and it solves the small RP form factor this camera has. Now, as far as the R6 Mark II and the Canon R8, the only two differences in the two cameras is there's no IBIS on the Canon R8 and the R6 Mark II has IBIS and of course the battery size and the form factor. But other than that, the two cameras are identical as far as sensors, software, and all that fun stuff. So anything that I show you here with the R8 is going to be great on the R6 Mark II also. The only advantage of the R6 Mark II is you can have a little bit better image stabilization, about two stops better image stabilization. But you'll see in all the footage I have in here, every bit of this footage is handheld in the video. And again with the images, I can't process the DxO pure raw, so these are not processed images as far as that goes, as far as all the sharpness and color and stuff like that. But just like we talked about with the R7 and the R5, the images look great. So I'm gonna get back out here in the field, freeze my butt off a little bit more, and shoot at extremely low light, which means we're shooting low shutter speeds and high ISOs at F9. So let's go do that. Okay, we just had the most incredible time just now. We found rock sandpipers. And not incredible on their own, just finding rock sandpipers. But it's been so cold here, like when I was here last time with all that ice and slush moving into the harbor. We had a lot of ice just floating on the water. And these rock sandpipers usually get on the edge of the harbor and get in the rocks, rock sandpipers, rocks, imagine that. But these guys were on the ice, on the slush, just thousands of them just everywhere. And it was just so cool to get low and see the little guys standing on one leg, you know, sleeping, had the night tucked. Just amazing time out there. Uh, pretty rare too to be able to catch that. Uh, I ran into some people that I know down here that photograph a lot down here and live down here. They said they've never seen that happen. I've seen them on the ice, like out farther out in the harbor somewhere else, but, or not outside of the harbor, but out in the bay. But I've never seen it like that. So just incredible, incredible. Just nice.
so let's talk a little bit about how this is performing, how with this lens and this body with the Canon R8. And just like I expected it would, because with the R7 and the R5, the autofocus worked great with that, locked them up, stuck on it. And the R8 to me has the better autofocus, and the R6 Mark II has the better autofocus out of all the Canon cameras right now because it's the newest one, really. So every new one they do really well. And it is sticky, great shoots up to 40 frames a second which most times i shoot 20 frames a second with this guy but when they started flying a little bit i moved it to 40 and i filled my card up real quick i have a couple 120 gig cards and i filled them both up out here just incredible so i'm not looking forward to pulling those images and video off of there but just a lot to go through but it worked extremely well now i'm shooting low light so i'm shooting the f9 and it's you can see it's just dark and dreary and get a little windy out here and so I was having to shoot some low shutter speed and some high ISOs and at times when I wanted to shoot them with the flight a little bit I had to bump that shutter speed up to 1200, 1600 and I was really pushing that ISO a little bit. Not really extremely high but I did hit 5 to 8K a few times on that ISO but with these new cameras mirrorless and the cleaning software you can get them cleaned up but I, I think what I've looked at so far briefly, what I looked in the back of the camera and I did dump a couple to quickly to Heidi's uh, uh, tablet real quick, the iPad, and they look good. So I think it's going to look really good. I'll probably post an image up here to see for yourself what they look like. Again, I don't want to just tell you how good it does. I want to show you what the examples are and what they look like and show you and not tell you that type thing. But it's worked really good and that was such a blast photographing those sandpipers. It, we were just kind of freaked out just because it was just so neat to see that it's such a unique situation of those sandpipers on the ice and the sludge just floating through at the edge of the harbor there it was just so cool and so many of them just just fantastic so now we're going to head out and look for some more stuff uh, we're going to go look for some eagles we're going to go check out some uh, see if we can walk the harbor see if we can find some seals or some otters and there should be some baby otters being here one squealing somewhere here so we're going to find him later too so Let's go do that and I'll talk to you just a minute. We'll talk a little bit about this camera and kind of what we're seeing out here and what we can find to photograph. Talk to you in just a minute. Well, let me take you back to yesterday. I almost forgot to talk about this. Uh, on the way from Anchorage into Homer, we stopped at a spot that I knew would have eagles and sure enough, we found the eagles. And it was just awesome. They aren't real skittish in this area. They kind of winter there and they kind of hang out in big groups in this area. So I got really good shots of them. And we had a little small break in the clouds so we could get kind of in one direction. We could do some backlit shots and stuff. But it's really nice. And what I wanted to do is try to shoot into the sun and see what kind of lens flare I got or any type of uh, differences there. But it handled really well, which I was really happy with. But it, it worked fine. But I just loved shooting eagles. And these were so much fun to shoot. We were coming back, you know, coming into Homer, that is. So just incredible, just fun. Okay, we are now going to start heading down here and start working these docks and see if we can find some otters or birds or seals or anything we can do. So we're going to see how this camera performs, this lens. I think it's so far it's been performing great. I really like it. I like the lens. It's really nice. It is, again, dark and dreary out here, getting a little windy and getting cold. But uh, like I said, at F9, you have to think about where to get your light. But so far it's working really good um, it's really cool with the color and the water out here too and the reflection of the boat so we're gonna go out here and see what we can find uh, hopefully something good like I said we've been hearing 
uh, a baby otter out here somewhere. You can hear him squeal. We haven't really pinpointed where it's hit, but we haven't really been out here walking and looking either. So if I find one, I'll show it to you. What else to show you, I'll show it to you. But hopefully I'll talk to you in a bit with something cool. We have ran into a super cool treat. We finally found that pup we've been hearing, that otter pup. And its mom is over here and it's nursing right now. Just incredible. And what's even better, she's an older mom, which the older otters, when they're around these docks, they start to not be as scared of people as much when they're around the docks. And towards the afternoon, when it gets a little darker like this, they will come up on these docks and lay down and get dried out and clean themselves if they got pups nurse them stuff like that and that's what she's been doing she's been up on this dock on this pier nursing the whole time so we've been able to sit and watch them and there this pup is hilarious he will play with mom and he was nursing and stuff at first just like a normal pup then he just got where he stopped nursing getting a little playful and all this fun stuff and just just fun to watch i love baby otters i love otters to start with but this little guy and this mom, and she is just, like I said, she is super chill, relaxed, not worried about much of anything. We even had some people walk down the docks with a couple kids and a dog. The dog didn't react to it, and it wasn't probably 10 yards away from the otter mom, and she just kind of looked at them, didn't see anything happen, and just kind of went back to doing her business, which is just incredible to see, but really cool. And plus, we've got about four or five other otters just coming right through here very close to us just just incredible so I'm gonna go back to shooting these guys some more and I'll talk to you in a minute and we may move to the other side to get a little different vantage of this mom and pup and the other otters and we do have another otter across on the other side of the slip that's come up onto the dock also an older gray-haired male over there just cleaning himself so I may go over and get pictures of him too so I'll talk to you in a minute this is really cool and really excited it's just so fun to see all this stuff talk to you in a minute So I don't know if you can see it, but right here behind me is immature bald eagle. There he goes, flying off. He went 20 yards behind me, so in the post. When I stopped here to talk to you for a second, I didn't even notice him until I turned around and, oh, oh, eagle, right in front of my face. Just incredible. I love Alaska. I love Homer. I love coming here to the docks, but this lens and this camera worked really well, even in this low light condition, shooting the otters. I had so much fun. In video, in the image stabilization with this guy, I guess that's what I would talk about now with stabilization. So I'm shooting this thing at 800 to 400 back and forth with this, this R8. And even with that IBIS, with the image stabilization, the lens, it was incredible. And actually the first day when I was shooting the Eagles, 
I was out here at 800 and I was going, this seems a little shaky. I thought, well, maybe the IBIS is not having a problem. Well, I looked at my lens and my image stabilization was off of my lens. Turned it back on, it went locked, rock steady. So since then, I've had no problems. I was shooting the rock sandpipers when I was shooting these otters and the eagles after that. Everything's just dead steady. I'm holding this thing handheld here. Now, this is a lighter rig now because this R8 with the grip is really light. And this grip, I can tell you what, guys, if you own an R8, get this grip. It's 40 some dollars. You got a whole video about it. I'll link it down in the description about this grip. It's like $49, I think. Holds two batteries and it makes this camera feel good. Like, so the feel with this R8 with the grip, okay? If you have an R6 Mark II, get the grip also. With the grip, it feels really good. And this is a lot lighter rig because it's only like five and a half pounds, I think, total with this rig together, even with the battery grip. And it just, just feels good. But the video is rock steady with this guy. So really, really cool. Now, I'm losing my light, losing it quick. It's uh, 4.20 right now. And the sun goes down now at 4.40. What's crazy when I was shooting that last video, I was down here in Homer, the sunset was at 3.30. Now it's almost an hour later for sunset. That's how quick we start gaining light here in Alaska. Just really, really cool. So I'm going to go out of here and we're probably going to cover the last this bit, the wrap up of what I think about this lens and this camera combo. And we'll look at the image quality and uh, all that fun stuff. Now I didn't include EVF footage this time. I didn't get it hooked up. It's been too fast and furious today and what yesterday was to really even hook the EVF up to mess with it. Uh, it's just it's just been non-stop finding something to shoot down here. It's just been crazy. And I'm gonna be here for another three days too. But we'll be doing other things like I'll be shooting the 800 F11, shooting the teleconverter with this lens, things like that. Some other stuff we're gonna do with this too. So those are the days we're reserved for that. But right now, this last two days have been shooting these two. So let's go look at the image quality. And the autofocus, like I said earlier, has been fantastic. It's just locked on where it's supposed to and not had a problem with it whatsoever. It's, it's been one of the better autofocus performances I've had, even over the R5 and the R7 with this R8. But let's go look at the image quality, see what kind of pictures we got, and I'll wrap this things up and tell you what I think about it. But I've had an incredible time here the last few days. Me and Heidi and Cassie have had a blast down here. It's just home or something special, even on days like this where it's dark and dreary. Just all the things you can find to shoot, and those rock sandpipers were just incredible, and the otters, just incredible. Of course, the eagles and everything else we've shot, the harbor seals, stuff like that. So let's go do that, wrap it up. So I'll talk to you here in just a little bit. Well, what an amazing couple of days. From the drive down with the eagles and then today with the rock sandpipers and with the mom and the baby otter, just incredible. And there's one bit I forgot to show you guys on the drive down when I was going through the footage and look at these pictures, I saw the footage and I forgot all about it. So much has been happening today and yesterday evening that I just forgot about it. When we were driving down, we stopped at the Kenai River and we were looking for those American Dippers. And briefly, they were on our side of the river, but then they went to the other side of the river. And we were about to give up when Heidi spotted across the river this river otters. These guys were running off out of the water, running down the river, and they'd run and then they would slide. I think that's the most favorite thing I love seeing about otters, river otters, when they run on snow. They'll run and then they'll just slide. And it was so, so incredible to watch that guy. It was extremely low light. I mean, it was hard to even shoot across. It was so dark. Uh, even with Cassie with the, the, you know, the F4 at 560 with the teleconverter on and and uh, Heidi was using my F4 lens and she, even for them was having hard getting time shooting those otters at how dark it was. But with the 200-800 at F9 recording the video, you know, at uh, one two fifths a second in, and shutter speed and I don't know what my ISO was off the top of my head, but it did a really good job at tracking those otters and recording them across. And one thing I noticed when I was doing uh, the footage, I thought it was I thought maybe I'm shaking too much because yeah, it looked like it was a little hard to hold steady there. 
and then a little bit later I figured out my problem I had the IS turned off on the lens and that just shocked me that, that I had done that. I don't know when I turned that off, but I thought I had a problem with the R8 and that lens, but actually it's because I had the in the stabilization off on the lens. So once I turned that back on, it became rock steady again, so really nice. But I've been looking through this footage to put this video together tonight and and it's, it's been a long day and a cold day and luckily I got some food in me, got warmed up here at the house and everything and it's really nice. But putting this footage together and looking at these images, I'm really extremely impressed with what I can get out of this Canon R8 and that 200-800 lens. It's been great on all the bodies and this one has really been nice too. To put that together because the R8 is extremely light and with that grip on it it feels a lot like the R3 or a big professional body when you're using it so it's really easy to go out in the field and use that and to have that 800 millimeters was just just great and the image quality that I'm seeing here out of these pictures of the rock sandpipers and there's not a whole lot to those birds because they're just gray and a little bit of brown and white and just looked incredible. And really with that ice, it just made it look nice in the water with the blue and the crystal white and the crystal blue, just beautiful. And then getting into the otter, the mom and baby otter, I was shooting a lot of this stuff at, you know, 250 to 400 to 640 uh, on the shutter speed and F9 and the, the ISO was getting a little higher, but I had some motion blur in there with the otters when they got in the water and they were moving around a lot. So that was a bit of a issue, which you're going to have to take that trade off to say, it's not that they're not in focus, you just you're going to get some motion blur when you start dropping that shutter speed. And I knew I was going to get that, but I knew I was going to get enough of them where I didn't have the, when they would kind of stop for a second or something. But if I saw a little faster action, I would bump it up to 800 or 1,000, which is enough for an otter to, to freeze it. And then my ISO got a little higher, but not extremely horribly bad. But the quality, I could see all the fur, the eyes were sharp. Everything was sharp the way I wanted it in the image. It looked really good. And for not having my DXO running the whole time, to give me the correct camera profile and the lens profile and the, all the colors and the sharpness and the noise, these came out really, really well. And I've been really happy with what I'm getting out of this lens. But yeah, it, it has really done well. And the lens has really impressed me. And this combo of the R8 with the 2A100 is fantastic. So what you're gonna get if you're running an R6 Mark II, you're gonna get a little bit better with the video because I had no problem hand-holding this lens for an extended amount of time. And when I was shooting these sandpipers, you're in an uncomfortable position laying down because it was high tide, so I was laying on these, we're laying on these rocks and there was no flat. You're laying it at an angle. So you're trying to turn that, so you're getting your head at some weird angles and holding that, and you really have to keep it steady. But with, even with the image stabilization, just with the lens and the digital IS on in the video, I didn't have much problem keeping that really on and not a whole lot of shake. Now what I do sometimes I would drift down or up slowly, but that was me. Or times when I was filming the otters, I had the camera, I was laying on my back and I had the camera on my chest and the movement's coming from me breathing. So as I breathe, the lens is going up just a hair, just enough, because 800 millimeters is you're shooting real tight, it would move it up a little bit. but. The image stabilization just from the lens alone was nice. So again, with an R6 Mark II, you're going to have in-body image stabilization, so the video will be so much easier to hold if you're shooting video. And for stills, not a problem. I even shooting a low shutter speed, I didn't have a problem with stills, other than sometimes motion blur that I knew I was going to get. So remember that. If you can live with the motion blur with the number of shots you want to get, then you're good. But if you see action, raise it up. And when I raised it up, the shutter speed for the sandpipers and for, or for the otter, I didn't have a problem with, with the headroom and the ISO. So again, my conclusion on this is with the R8 and the R6 Mark II, and probably even the R6, I'm assuming, because the R5 worked great, you're going to love this lens with it, and at least I do. So I, I really like this lens. And uh, 
The next couple of videos we're going to have is going to be probably the 800 F11 because you guys requested that a lot compared against the 2 to 800. And we're also going to take the teleconverter. So I've been already been shooting the teleconverter with this lens, this camera and lens situation with the R7 and the R8. And I've been happy with it, but we're going to do a full video on that too. So that's really about it, guys. Uh, again, if you're enjoying this content, you enjoyed this video, I have a lot of fun down in Homer shooting this, and I've got a few more days to shoot to these other videos. And uh, I'm looking, we're, we're all excited about tomorrow of getting out, uh, hopefully finding those otters again and the sandpipers, because at the very end of the day, we found those sandpipers again before we were leaving in the dark, and they were on some different uh, ice, excuse me. So we're looking forward to getting those tomorrow. But as always, guys, until next time, get outside and go run that shutter.